we're also going to learn how to test a horse through what's called surrogate testing. Um, so setting up the system for accurate feedback. Oh, somebody's excited. Yeah. <laughs> we want to check for a clear working circuit. So that means we want to find a muscle that can show a locking response and an unlocking response. So before I had Jen come up in the beginning and I showed you how to do the spindle cell on her, and you know, the muscle was holding and then we did the spindle cell and it changed the response. So that's what you need for a clear indicator circuit. You need a muscle that can show a locking response and an unlocking response. If the muscle won't hold at all, or if it will just stay locked and won't turn off, then you can't really use it to gather information. Because muscle testing is a kind of a binary system. It's a on, off, yes, no, kind of system. So we're going to use it to find out what's, what's the system is saying, hey, this is helpful, this is intact, things are good, and we're going to use it for this as like, oh, we're stressed, we're overwhelmed, that doesn't work so well for us. Okay, seem pretty straightforward so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, you want to check for a clear circuit, and uh, you test an indicator, and, um, and how you test is really important. So when you're testing, you want to have the person hold their arm out here like at about 30 degrees, and you're going to bring your hand to uh, just above their wrist and bring your hand to rest on their arm. So you don't want to muscle test by taking a flying leap like that. <laughs> okay? You want to come to a resting spot, and then you want to let the person know. So like if I was going to test Lynn, so, okay, if I just mm -hmm. so I would bring my hand here, and then I would want to let her know before I push so that she's prepared that I'm going to push. So it's okay if I muscle test you? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a hold. So I'm going to say hold, and then I'm going to push. So hold. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, the thing I noticed about Lynn, she immediately, instead of holding, pushed up against me. That's okay. People will do various different things, and uh, there's an art to muscle testing, but for the most part, you can relax for a second. For the most part, you guys aren't going to be working with lots and lots of different people. Uh, you're probably getting, I mean, some of you folks came with your friends or your family. Uh, somebody else may go home and say, oh, I didn't come to class with somebody, but all you really need to do is find one person who you can show them how muscle testing works. And once they get a feel for it and the two of you get a, a working understanding of it, you can use them to, go, to gather all kinds of information. Okay? I'm also going to teach you how to do self-testing uh, later in the day because people often ask, well, how do you test just for yourself? Self-testing is kind of a separate art, but we're going to learn how to do uh, surrogate testing and muscle testing first. So if I'm testing Lynn, I'll just say hold. And that time, instead of pushing up against me, she just held, which is great. So pretty easy to hold? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, and I'm not pushing really hard, am mm -mm, I? Not at all. Okay, so you can relax your arm. So with muscle testing, you don't have to push hard. It's not like you're trying to whomp the person down. You're not arm wrestling. Um, the term muscle testing is a term we are kind of left with from Dr. Goodhart, but it's, a, it's a, not a really great term because it misleads you as to the nature of what you're doing. Because it's really an information access retrieval system. And, uh, and that's what we're doing with a muscle test. But the term muscle test makes it sound like it's an act of strength and, you know, can you withstand something. What uh, is it again? Information what? Uh, it's a biofeedback system. It's an information retrieval system. That's a retrieval. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, if you ask me tomorrow, I'll come up with a different set of words. Yeah, it's all fine. I'm, I'm making my own notes too there. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you've got a muscle that can first lock and unlock. So since we're going to use this to gather information, we want to make sure that our measuring stick or our instrumentation is up to speed to start with. So does that make sense? So uh, what I'm going to do with Lynn, is it okay? I'm going to mm -hmm. test your arm here. Now, the muscle that we're testing here is in the front of the shoulder. It's not on top of the shoulder, it's in the front of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And it runs at a kind of a diagonal like this. So it's not up and down, and it's not like that, but it runs at like 45 degrees here. So if you hold here, and then if I go to the spindle cell and just push in like that a couple times, just drop, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not reaching for you, I'm going to relax. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and different people will test differently. Some people, like she was really easy to test. I just did the spindle cell and the arm just dropped. Other people, you know, a lock looks like that and an unlock looks like that, and they need some coaching to show a more clear response. But then some people, even with a lot of coaching, all you ever get from them is lock and unlock. And for folks like that, um, they'd be challenging for a person who's just learning muscle testing to maybe be able to get a read on them. But with practice, you can test just about anybody. 
And I know because when I first learned to do this stuff, uh, my teacher had been teaching for 11 years. And, um, and I had people who I tried to test who I struggled with in the beginning. And if I called her over, it worked like that for her every single time, which actually messed with my confidence a lot. <laughs> but um, at a certain point, I realized, oh, with practice, I got good enough at it. And now, um, you know, it never crosses my mind to think, is this person somebody I'll be able to test or not? But all you really need to do is be able to find how to get a working relationship with one other person to do this kind of work. So those of you who came with somebody who you know from another uh, barn or stable or something like that, um, you're in great shape because once you learn how to work with each other, you can go back and do all the testing you want. Um, so I'm going to do one other thing with Lynn. So I'm going to have you hold here. So hold. Okay, I'm going to invite you to think of something stressful. And let me know when you're thinking about it. Okay. A little harder to hold? And now think of something really happy. Let me know when you're thinking about it. Hold. Huh. <laughs> Pretty different, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You've never had muscle testing, have you? This is this is kind of cool watching yeah. her. Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when I'm teaching in a class, I always like to have somebody who's never been tested before come up and do the demo, because it's not uncommon to get that kind of response from them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh wow, you know, that's, that was really cool. So, um, and let's do one other thing. So hold here, and I want you to say, my name is Linda. My name is Linda. And now say, my name is George. My name is George. Uh, <laughs> a lie detector. You can't lie. <laughs> so, so here's the thing about a lie detector. So somebody said it's like a lie detector. I've had lots and lots of students in class say, oh, this is like a lie detector. And often parents will say, hey, I can go home and use this on a teenager. <laughs> here's the thing about it, though. As soon as the person you're using it on knows it, they knows what it is, if they want to <laughs> they want to sabotage it or make yeah. something show up, um, they can do that. So it's, it's not, and it's, you know, we would consider it unethical to use it like a lie detector. Um, so we wouldn't recommend that. And um, the other thing to know about that is because you can override the result, either as the person doing the testing or the person being tested, um, you should use some discernment if somebody's got a financial incentive that they're testing you on. So for example, I've met people who sell multi-level uh, company vitamins who've been trained to do muscle testing by somebody over the phone. And, uh, and of course, the, for them, the result is the more often the muscle goes weak, the more money in their pocket. Um, so you should just use some good discernment, you know, if somebody's got a financial gain like that to be had from it. Uh, most chiropractors who do muscle testing will carry um, a lot of vitamins and herbs, but those people have been well trained. And, uh, and they'll be looking for things like, let's say Lynn needed vitamin E, you know, she might go to a chiropractor and he might have like six or eight or ten different vitamin E's. They're different formulas with different combinations that he'll be able to see which one is the best suited for her system. You know, so vitamin E comes and there's two natural and maybe five synthetic versions and a lot of vitamin E's out there are combinations of these things. You know, so, um, so being able to, to really pinpoint with some accuracy that kind of information uh, can be really, really great. So. Um, so any question about any of that, tell me. So here's what I'm going to invite you all to do. Is, uh, in a moment, I'm going to invite you to get up and find a partner and, uh, and ask the partner, is it okay if I muscle test you and if they have any injuries? And then have them hold the arm out here. And uh, you want to bring your hand again to a, holding, you know, to a position where you're stopped and say hold and then push. And then use the spindle cell, have them think of something stressful have them say their name and a name that's not their name, and just see if you can get the arm to show in multiple ways a lock and an unlock response. Okay? Now before you do that, I want to go to one more thing. If you turn the page, there's some guidelines for accurate muscle testing.